everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel Wrong Math. As always, today also we are going to explore a new concept of mathematics and physics. Get ready to dive into the world of kinematics with the discussion of uniform circular motion. Starting with a very basic question, what is uniform circular motion? When an object moves around a circle with constant speed, it is called uniform circular motion. So, basically speed that is the magnitude of velocity remains constant, but direction of velocity keeps changing. Direction of velocity is tangential to the path at every point. This change in velocity is the fundamental reason for acceleration to come into picture. Presence of acceleration hints us that a force is acting on the object. This force is very popularly called centripetal force. Point to be noted here is centripetal force acts perpendicular to velocity of object. What is the topic of discussion today then? Today we are going to prove that in uniform circular motion, the magnitude of velocity remains constant. Consider at some time instant t, the object is at some angular position x. Suppose the object is moving on the circular path with some speed v. As we discussed, a centripetal force acts on the object in the radial direction and acts towards the center of circle. This means acceleration will also be in the same direction. And hence, the new change in velocity, that is, the additional velocity gained by object, will also be in the same direction. Let this additional velocity be delta v. Let's resolve the vectors into horizontal and vertical components. For this, we need to know the angle each of them makes with x-axis. Let's use a bit of geometry. So let's draw a line parallel to x-axis and passing through A and name it AC. So as AC is parallel to x-axis and we know alternate angles are equal. So angle CAO is equal to x. As radius is perpendicular to velocity vector, we can write angle velocity vector makes with x-axis as 90 minus x degrees. Now with angles in hand, we can easily resolve velocity vectors. So the components would be as follows. Here we can clearly notice that along x-axis v sine x and delta v cos x are in opposite direction and hence will get subtracted. While in the y direction, v cos x and delta v sine x are in same direction and gets added up. So the net velocity vector along x-axis is v sine x minus delta v cos x, and that in the y direction is v cos x plus delta v sine x. So the magnitude of final velocity acquired is related to magnitude in x and y directions as v square is equal to vx square plus vy square. So let resultant velocity be v1. Then v1 square is equal to v sine x minus delta v cos x whole squared plus v cos x plus delta v sine x whole squared. We can represent this sum of squares as basically two squares whose area is being added. First square initially has a side of v sine a x and then its side is reduced by delta v dot cos x. Second square initially had a side length of v cos x, and then it is increased by delta v sine x. Important thing to note here is that the smaller squares at the corners are ignored as delta v is very small and its square term will be negligible. We can clearly observe that the area decreased from the v sine x square is equal to the area added to the v cos x square. So the total area of the square of the components of resultant velocity is v sine x square plus v cos x square which is equal to v square multiplied by sine square x plus cos square x, which equals to v square. Hence, v1 square is equal to v square. So we get that the magnitude of resultant velocity remains constant. This is what the objective of this video was to prove it. If you liked the video, hit the like button. And to learn more such interesting math and physics concepts, subscribe my YouTube channel and stay tuned with us.